There is an invasive shrub that is a thorn in the side of landowners across eastern North America, both figuratively and literally, as it spreads quickly, forms dense impenetrable thickets armed with barbed wire-like thorns, and outcompetes native vegetation. Of course, I am talking about multiflora rose, Rosa multiflora, a shrub that is native to China, Korea, and Japan, but can now be found in every eastern U.S. state and the eastern Canadian provinces. So how did this invasive shrub get to North America? The exact date of multiflora rose introduction is often debated, but it seems that it was first imported to be used as a readily available and easy to grow rootstock for ornamental roses sometime in the mid 1800s. By the 1930s, government agencies were promoting it for erosion control, wildlife plantings, and as living fence. I remember it being offered in wildlife habitat thicket packages back in the late 1970s and early 1980s, along with a whole bunch of other invasive species. It was also planted along highways and in median strips to reduce headlight glare and as a crash barrier into the 1960s and 70s. All this intentional planting created a huge amount of multiflora rose biomass from which it could spread to other areas. If you hate invasive species but love native plants, be sure to pollinate that like button. By the time people figured out multifloral rose was going to be a problem, it was too late and its invasion of just about every corner of eastern North America had begun. It is now listed as a noxious weed in many states and its sale and distribution is banned in several others. But just why is multifloral rose so invasive? I'll start off with the ability of multifloral rose to produce a huge number of resilient seed. On average, a healthy multifloral rose shrub will produce 500,000 seeds each growing season. Some of these seeds will be dispersed by birds and other animals that eat the hips, which can introduce the multifloral rose into new areas. The majority, however, will fall close to the parent shrub where they can germinate and add to the thicket, or they can remain dormant in the soil for 10 to 20 years. As you can see, fighting a multifloral rose infestation can be a long-term project. Multifloral rose also has perfect flowers, male and female flower parts on the same flower, and is self-fertile. So just one shrub can produce up to half a million seeds and quickly become a thicket, and a huge problem. It can also reproduce vegetatively. Any place a stem contacts the ground, roots will form, producing a new shrub that is a clone of the parent what we refer to as layering in the horticulture industry. Shrubs can spread quickly this way under the right conditions. Multiflora rose gets a huge jump on native plants and even some other invasives by leafing out in early and late winter to early spring. This allows it to start building up nutrients for flowering and seed production ahead of the natives it is competing with. They also lose leaves later in the year, allowing them to produce and transport more nutrients back to the roots for a fast start in the spring. This advantage makes it impossible for most native plants and shrubs to outcompete multiflora rose. Here in Kentucky, it is not unusual to see leaves on multiflora rose 12 months out of the year. It is a highly adaptable shrub, like many invasives are, and will grow just about anywhere, full sun to shade and in a wide variety of soil types and moisture levels. The only places multiflora rose does not grow well in are extremely arid, dry soil areas such as the desert southwest, and places with consistently wet soils with standing water. Any place that doesn't get below negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit for extended periods is subject to colonization by this terribly invasive shrub. And last but not least, there is no natural predator or pest that eats multiflora rose to any extent that will control it. Several biocontrols have been tested, but none have been shown to be effective. Goats will eat it, but their use is not viable in many situations. So as you can see, if multiflora rose gets established on your land, it can spread quickly, outcompete the native plants, form a monoculture, and become an impenetrable thicket of tangled stems and recurved thorns. This is a large shrub and can grow 10 to 15 feet tall with an even larger spread, so it can eat up a lot of ground in a short time, especially due to its ability to spread vegetatively. When it comes to multiflora rose, it's a matter of when it shows up on your property, not a matter of if. Catching it fast and dealing with it is the best option, but be sure you are dealing with multiflora rose and not one of our native roses. Those you want to have. I can do a video on how to identify multiflora rose and how to distinguish it from the many species of native roses we have in Eastern North America. If that's a video you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments. Dealing with a multifloral rose infestation can be a major undertaking and the methods that need to be employed can vary greatly depending on location, land use, legal restrictions, and personal goals. 
In some areas, you may be able to get help with multifloral removal and control from your local conservation district or state conservation department. My advice is to talk to your local extension or NRCS agent to find out the best course of action and if there are any cost share programs available. Invasive species control can be costly, both in time and money. So a cost share program can be greatly helpful. Even with all the negative aspects of multifloral rows, I still see it being touted as a great wildlife plan on websites and even by some governmental agencies. While some songbirds do eat the hips and some do nest in the thickets, the harm done to native plant communities by multifloral rose infestation greatly outweighs any good that this invasive species does. There are several native roses that produce hips that birds eat and provide thorny, dense nesting cover. These are the species we should be promoting and planting while doing everything we can to eradicate the invasive multifloral rose. I did a community post asking which woody invasive is the biggest problem on people's property and there was a clear winner by a huge margin. To find out why that plant is such a problem in our native plant communities and ecosystems, check out this video about bush honeysuckles and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.